Hello everyone, welcome to another session of POA for you. My name is Leroy and today I'm going to walk through the NA level specimen paper 2021, paper 2, question 1. Now this is a very important question because this question is tested every year. It carries 20 marks and if you can back this 20 marks, it's a really great start for your exams. So without further ado, let's jump into the question and I'll share with you how I'll do it. So the question is, uh, they always start with a trial balance and this is of a service uh, fee revenue kind of uh, business as opposed to a, you know, a sale of a goods uh, business. And they would have additional information and based on this additional information, you're supposed to make some adjustments to come up with an two outputs, a statement of financial performance and a statement of financial position. Statement of financial performance is one where it compares revenues and expenses to determine whether you make a profit or loss. And statement of financial position um, will include assets, liabilities, and equities. Right, so we the first step we have to, and I'm going to share with you three steps that are core, fundamental to this whole preparation, and would help you populate these two output seamlessly. So the first step is this a uh, are these items an A or B item? You know, um, so A items are revenues and expenses. So I'm just going to populate it as I see. So anything that's expense, income uh, related. It's A. So these are all the expense and revenues items that I see. And B items are asset liabilities or equity items. So fixtures and fittings and motor vehicles are non-current assets. Accumulated depreciation are in the same family. Uh, so all these are drawings and capital. They are equity items. So that's it. First step done. As simple as that. The next step is to look at the additional information and start to understand the journal entries that you know will, the, that, that will be produced as a result of this additional information. Um, and the first one, rent, 550 was paid in advance. So rent here indicates 5950. Rent is an expense and it's saying that it's not so much. You know, actually out of 5950, 550 was paid in advance for future years or next year. So let's bring the rent down and rent is an expense debit nature so to bring it down you got to credit rent and what do you debit you have created uh, or now you know there's a new um, prepaid rent and that's an exp uh, that's a asset so assets debit nature and when you want to increase that asset you debit it as prepaid rent so the first entry is this oh, excuse me excuse me it's uh, this debit prepaid rent and credit rent. Then the next entry payment for stationery 66 was owing stationery of 295. On top of this 295, they're telling you that you still owe $66 because you have spent more than 295 and 66 more. So this has to go up by 66. So you debit um, printing and stationery. Whoop, stationery. And that's 66. And then you credit P and S payables because you still owe them and it becomes a something that's still payable. Um, this is around depreciation. So assets are depreciated and then this is depreciated at 10% per annum using straight line method. Asset, uh, the journal entries for asset depreciation is very standard. It's debit depreciation expense. In this case, F and F and credit, uh, credit uh, accumulated depreciation. In this case, F and F. The amount, because it's a straight line method at 10%, you have to take 10% of the cost of the asset. So the cost of the asset is 18,500 and that's it. The next item, uh, motor vehicles depreciated 20%, reducing method. Uh, so the journal entries firstly, they're the same, right? But the, how you get the number is different. So I'm just gonna put the journal entries from uh, uh, additional information three and change it to motor vehicles. And this is 20% reducing method. So firstly, it's 20%, right? Times 
not just the cost, right? Before it was just the cost, but now you've got to put the cost of 14,650 less 2930, which is the accumulated depreciated, uh, depreciation to date. So cost less accumulated depreciation is net book value and the reducing method is the rate, which is 20% here, multiplied by the net book value of the asset. So that's 2344, that's it. The next one, uh, service fee included in here, this 30,000 was 1,008 received in advance. So service fee is credit in nature to bring this down because not all of this represents service fee this year. 1,800 is for future years. So to represent what service fee is this year, you got to bring this number down by 1,800. So this is a credit nature item because revenues are. So to bring it down, you debit service fee revenues and you credit advance service fee revenue Ooh, revenue and you can't see it uh, and i'll show it to you here and what's the amount here it's uh, 1800 right and that's it step two it's done you got all the journal entries that um, you know uh, that comes as a result of this uh, additional information now step four um, step sorry step three I beg your pardon step three is to make sure that you update these balances where these balances are impacted by the journal entries or if these journal entries um, bring you new accounts that are not in trial balance you highlight them so that you don't forget to include them in these statements okay so let's look at the first journal entry and see what the impact of it is the prepaid rent um do we see any prepaid rent here nah that's a new item so let's highlight this and this new item belongs to the financial position statement because it's an asset so i'm going to put b here just to indicate that i have to bring it to part b of the answer and credit rent so rent is here when you credit an expense item you bring the balance down so it's going to be 5950 less 550 and that will be something that I would add to here. Then 540 is now the new balance that I'll bring to all these different statements as when I prepare the answer. Next, printing and stationary debit. So printing and stationary debit would increase this balance. So 295 plus 66. And then I would um the final the new amount for printing and stationary expense is 361 and pns payables do i have that here no i don't so this is a new item and what is this this is a liability so it belongs to b the statement of financial position as well next depreciation hmm, depreciation expense do i see it here no i don't see it here so i'm going to highlight it and then i'm going to put a here because expense go expenses go to the financial performance statement and accumulated depreciation i have it here and i have it for fnf uh it's 740 that's the original number and this is credit accumulated depreciation which is a credit nature item so if i credit it i'm going to increase the value and so that's what i'm going to reflect here excuse me in my uh workings i'm going to and which is a final amount of 9250. Motor vehicle depreciation, I don't see it here as well. So I'm going to mark this as a new item. Depreciation is an expense. So I'm going to put it as item A. And accumulated depreciation, I'm going to uh, 2930 is the original amount. I add 2344. And the new balance is going to be 5274. Service fee revenue, uh, debit service fee revenue. Yes, I see service fee revenue, that's the first item. And revenue is credit nature, so if I debit, I'm going to bring the original value down. So I'm going to minus it by 1800. And if I do this, final amount is 28,000 odd. Now, advanced service fee revenues, do I have this? Hmm. No, this is a new account, right? You don't see it here right in the trial balance so i'm going to put this is what what is this this is a this is a, this is a liability because if you receive revenues in advance you've not earned it yet so that's a, something that you have an obligation 
uh, to return if the if necessary. All right, so I'm going to put it as B. So three steps are done, and from here on, it's just transferring these items into the different statements. The first, uh, firstly, I'm going to show you how we're going to transfer it to the statement of financial performance. So you got to remember this format, right? Uh, so it starts with revenues. Always starts with some kind of revenues, and this is the revenues. This is the new amount. I'm not going to pick the old amount anymore. Okay, I move this across, so I'm going to mark it as moved. Then after transfer the revenue, I'm going to add any other income. And in this case, I have commission income. And I'm going to add in the commission income, which is 850 here. Then I'm going to less. So this is a standard format that you got to remember, yeah? Uh, less expenses and oops, I didn't mark this yet. I'm going to add all these three expenses rent, insurance, and PNS, right? So rent, whoops, rent, insurance, and uh, printing and stationery. So PNS, and I'm going to bring the values over. So rent, we have a new value, so I'm going to bring the new value over. I'm going to insurance, we don't have a new value, so I'm going to put the original value. And PNS, we do have. A new value. I'm just going to put the workings here, uh, which is 59550 plus 550 because your examiners would want to see that. And for this, I would put this right now. The next thing I'll move general expenses and motor vehicles. Yep, general expenses uh, and motor vehicle expense. And these two items, they don't have new value, so I'm going to put the original number, 860 and 1675 respectively. So all the A's from the trial balance are moved. Uh, let's look at the journal entries to see whether I need to move anything here. Yes, I need to move these two, the depreciation. I'm going to mark them. So I have two depreciation expense. Uh, one is for F and F, and the other one is for motor vehicles. And I'm going to move the value of 1850 and oops, so 1850 and 2344. So, with all the A's moved, I'm going to sum up all my expenses. Uh, and my total expense is 23,000. Then I'll get a profit for the year. Of course, if it's negative, then it becomes a loss for the year. But in this case, if I add the revenues and the commission income and I less the expenses, I get a profit of 6180. This 6180 will flow into the statement of financial position, which I'll indicate B here, and I'll talk you through in the next video. So I, I hope this gives you a flavor of uh, how these three steps are important because when I populated this statement of financial performance, it was very quick. It was literally copy and paste. But we have to understand, of course, the format of this uh, financial performance statement. Hope you found this uh, video helpful. Um, watch the next video, which I would uh, walk you through how to populate the statement of financial position. Um, I would urge you to retry this and see whether you come to the same conclusion. And if you have any questions, please uh, ask over this channel or email me at poa 4 you at gmail.com. So thank you very much and good luck.